You're listening to The Bible Guys, a podcast where a couple of friends talk about the Bible in fun and practical ways. Here we are. We are here. Yes. (laughs) Here we are. And I'm glad. (laughs) I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So he's Jeff. I'm Chris. We're The Bible Guys, and we have an exciting podcast for you today. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, uh, we're going to do the very best we can. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know if it's going to be good, but we're going yeah, yeah, to we're we're give it. A, we're going to give it our give it our all. best shot. Well, as usual, we're going to start off for the few, first few minutes doing a segment of funness and funness. Yeah, and so just like taboo, uh, we're going to give. We need a, like a roll in with a with a theme song now. Yeah. Segment of funness. Yes, a same same yeah. tune. There's that same <laughs> same note you hit. So uh, just like Taboo, uh, I'm going to do it this time with you, because last time you did it with me, I'm going to give you uh, some clues, Okay. and you have to guess the word. The audience is going to try to beat you, Okay. and the hardest part about this is I can't say certain words. Specific words. What words can't you say? Well, I'm, I'll tell you later. <laughs> so if you're watching instead of listening, okay. so for the for the 40% that watch, okay. uh, we're going to actually put the words that I cannot say on the screen, okay? Okay. okay. So here we go. Ready? All right. All right. Um... When you put logs in a pit and light it on fire, what is that called? Bonfire. That's it. There you go. I couldn't say burn, camp, beach, wood, because I said logs, Mm -hmm. and fall. But you could say fire? Yeah. That was weird. Yeah. Oh, I guess, I guess maybe. Fire's in bonfire. I shouldn't have said that. I should say, I should have said light it it up. Light it up. All right. Well, I I lose that one. Okay. Because I said fire. Okay. Okay. How about this one? Ready? Yes. All right, so in your office, there's big, long, puffy black things that three people can sit Couches. on. Couches. That's it. There you go. I wasn't allowed to say leather, furniture, sit, sofa, or potato. You said sit on. I didn't say sit. Yes, you did. That three people can sit on. I have blown it. <laughs> I have proven myself not very good. Okay. I can't believe it. Oh, man. This, Chris, is un- this is unusual. I know. I know. Usually you dominate in games. <clears throat> hey, didn't you say You're last the time? You're game dominator. You're you the said game-inator. last time. Listen to me. You said last time, I'd like it to be known that we've done this four or five times and we've uh-huh. never said a word. That's right. That's right. And I've done it twice in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I will promise you okay, you're that not I'm gonna not going to do it again. Time. Okay. Okay. You ready? Okay. Yes. All right. I got three more. Okay. And I'm going to oh, nail them. Okay. Okay. Wow. I'm so embarrassed. Only zero days since our last accident. Right. right. <laughs> Ready? Yes. A popular flavor of beef jerky is what? Teriyaki. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to say sweet Japanese chicken sauce or rice. Okay. There you go. Hey, huh? Teriyaki. There how you about go. that? <clears throat> okay. How about this one? Um, oh, I got it. Uh, Trump says that CNN is blank news. Fake news. There you go. <laughs> I was not allowed to say fraud, con, real, phony, or counterfeit. Okay. Fake. <clears throat> okay. Mm-hmm. And then, um, okay, I got it. Ready? Babe Ruth was known to be not a famous catcher, but a famous... Hitter. Uh, another word for Hit, that. Uh, batter. Yes. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I yeah. wasn't allowed to say baseball. I wasn't Obviously, I wasn't allowed to say hitter. Mm. Uh, cricket, cake, or mix. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, those last yeah, three, I go, nailed them. You nailed them. I, t- I, I, I couldn't believe I said okay. sit, and I said... A, so we had we had a run portion. of like a thousand of those in a row without messing up, no. and now we hit reset and we're back Dude, to Dude, we've three. only done that segment like five times. I know, but it felt like a thousand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm minus okay. a thousand points. Okay. Really? Yeah. I, I, you're going to deduct a thousand points from your my, point total? Of my point total, yeah. Wow. It's a sad day. That's brutal. Yeah. Okay. Well, good job, man. That was amazing, and thank you, Desiree, for such a challenging segment. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. I've embarrassed us. Ugh, I'm ashamed. I feel like we should just. <clears throat> I feel like we should just erase this one and go back and restart. No, that's what it feels that'd like. Be cheating. Well, no, no. I mean, with a different list. Jeff, I don't cheat. You don't cheat. No. Okay. Actually, no. I don't. I do not cheat. Okay. Good. Good. Neither do I. Well, then, boy, we are good Christians. Yes. So here we go. Jesus is going to teach about the cost of following him in Matthew chapter 8, and then again in uh, Luke chapter 9. And these are some pretty big uh, comments, right, that he oh, really, yeah. really, really challenges his followers. So that's what we're going to read. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 18 is where we're going to start. 
When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he instructed his disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. And then one of the teachers of religious law said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. Another of his disciples said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me now. Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. And in Luke chapter 9, he says, As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in, and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. He said to another person, Come follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Another said, Yes, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me say goodbye to my family. But Jesus told him, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Wow. Yep, he's just laying it down. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, so these are just Excuse a little me. bit out of order because Jesus has already crossed the, the, the Jordan River, went into, uh, went into uh, Jordan. And this says it mentions that he crosses the lake. But anyways, the idea is um, that this is a theme that happens multiple times. People come and say, I'll follow you. Or Jesus invites them to follow, and then he, but then they always have an excuse. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it does say that he yeah. crosses the lake, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Um, Again, it's another <clears throat> thing to protest at Tyndale. Yeah, there you go. Yep. Wow, I can't believe they missed that. They they should have consulted the Bible guys. Yeah, I know. That's their problem. <laughs> so, uh, so here it is. Jesus is laying <clears throat> down the, 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 the commitment level. And by the way, I think it's very interesting how... Uh, so here's a teacher of the religious law. Mm-hmm. So typically when they were describe a teacher of the religious law, it's usually what? A Pharisee. Usually a Pharisee, yeah. Yeah. Pharisee or a Sadducee, but usually Pharisee. Yeah. And so th- think about that. That That's really interesting mm-hmm. because there aren't too many references. I mean, we have Nicodemus, mm-hmm. right? Being yeah. referenced as a yeah, Pharisee yeah. who, who yeah. you know, proves his worth at the end, right? right. Goes and gets the body of Jesus at the end. Yep. And then really uh, there's sort of Gamaliel, Right. He was open. He was open to Paul, right. but it doesn't say that he was a follower of Jesus. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah. the message of Jesus, yeah. right? In the book of Acts, it says many priests and teachers of the law followed yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. after the after resurrection. After the resurrection, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. But but there's not too many. It, uh, you know, the point is, is that I think it's very yeah, interesting. This is rare. And, and he says, I will follow you wherever you go. Yeah. And, and in other words, like what he's really saying is, you know, you and I, we're thinking like, okay, let's pack the car and be back you know, follow you wherever you go. But that's not what this meant. Right. This meant I will leave my father and mother and brothers and I will say, I don't, I'm not sure when I'll be back <clears throat> because they didn't know he was going to die. Right. They, they just thought it was a movement. Right. And, and they just thought, you know, I'm, I'm with you to the end. They didn't know how long it was going to be. So this, this was a commitment for potentially years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and then Jesus replies with the strangest reply. He, he's basically saying like, I don't think you know what you're saying, right. right? Because it's not like I'm going back to my headquarters. It's not like I have a camp or a base to set up shop. Uh, you know, you understand that like day to day, I don't even know where I'm sleeping. Right. Right. And that's what he's saying. Foxes have dens to live in, birds have nests, but I don't have any place to lay my head. And these guys, Pharisees and Sadducees, both tended to be pretty wealthy. The Pharisees start off way more blue collar than the Sadducees. The Sadducees were elites. As a matter of fact, oftentimes by the time Jesus day, the Sadducees uh, were um, they were the minority among the religious teachers and, and leaders, but they were uh, the majority in the leadership of the temple. Mm. And uh, they would buy, oftentimes buy their positions, um, pay the government in order to be able to get assigned as uh, into key roles. So they had a lot of resources. And whether you were a Pharisee or a Sadducee, Pharisees, like I said, start off more blue collar, but over time they build wealth. And on top of that, everybody treated them so well. There's a lot of perks. Mm. You don't have to be rich to feel comfortable. Right. You know what I mean? When you get lots of perks, there's all these privileges, all these perks. You get to sit at the head of the table. They give you the finest food, the finest wine. Whenever you're in a, in a village, you get the finest hotel room, right? All that stuff. It just comes to you because you're a Pharisee and so it's interesting that it's that guy who says, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus goes, yeah, I don't even have any place to sleep. Mm. <laughs> and the guy goes, yeah, never mind. 
Right. Right. You're going to have yeah. to get. You, you, well, it doesn't say his reaction, <laughs> but uh, he probably thought it. Well, the assumption here is that none of them, <clears throat> none of them actually followed Jesus, right? right they right. all. And so he, he, Jesus goes right at the motivation. So the guy's motivation may have been, I want the prestige of traveling with the new superstar in the country. Yeah, maybe. Right. And that's why Jesus might have been calling it out. And Jesus went right after, yeah, we don't have any luxury suites and we don't even have a limo. Right. Right. That's, that's kind of what he's doing. And, and because as you look at it, the other one, the guy goes, um, you know, let me go and return and bury my father. And there's no indication that his father was dead mm-hmm. had just just died. Really? Right. That's not what happens. Because the guy, the guy was like, you know, um, uh, I will follow you. I just got to go bury my dad first. And so, and then there's no indication maybe his dad was terminally ill, or it might have just been, I will, after dad dies. Yeah, it could be that. So I'll follow you in a few years, right? Let me, let me, let me just be with family, and I don't want to miss my dad, all these things. And, and so there's this immediacy to Jesus' call to, to follow, and it seems like he goes, Jesus goes right after the, the intent mm. or what's really going on in their heart. The, the idea that his dad hadn't died yet is not the issue with Jesus. Right. That, that's not the issue. He's going after the heart of this guy where the guy's using his father as an excuse. And it's, I, think, I think we do that a lot. We use our jobs as an excuse. I can't speak up because I might lose my job, right? right. Or we use our, our kids as an excuse. Oh, well, you know, I can't make it to church again for the 32nd week in a row because kids, sports, you know, whatever. And we, we use people, we use kids, we use family members, we use relationships as excuses as to why we can't do the most important things. And uh, with regard to faith. And so it seems like that's what Jesus is doing. He's going right at the cause of their heart issues. Yeah, That's great. Well, let me read a note from the New uh, Living Translation Life Application Bible. It says, following Jesus is not always easy or comfortable. Mm, Often it means great cost and sacrifice with no earthly rewards or security. You may find that following Christ costs you popularity, friends, leisure time, or treasured habits. While the cost of following Christ is high, the value of being Christ's disciple is even higher. Discipleship is an investment that lasts for eternity and yields incredible rewards. So uh, I heard a statement one time, and I've used it so many times in a sermon. And the statement is, um, no matter the cost, Jesus is worth the price. Yeah. Right. So uh, I, and I also remember a, a message that I did a long time ago as well where I sort of tried to build it. I I did it on a Wednesday night and I talked about the tension of how much is enough when giving to God. Yeah. Right. So I sort of started off that way, you know, because I always like to build tension at the beginning of the messages and, and, you know, and, and it's a question worthy of asking. It's like, how much is enough? It's like, okay, God, I've given you enough. So here's the question. How much is enough? Like God doesn't ask for much. This Mm -hmm. is the way I sort of presented it. I said, he doesn't ask for much. He just wants my money, my time, uh, my choices, right? right? He wants my, uh, you know, my, my, my agenda or his agenda over mine, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just nothing much. Right. Right. You know, he just, just, just everything. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, yeah, pretty much everything. Yeah. Right. And then in the conclusion, after you sort of dive into it, you know, and you read all the scriptures and you read all the requirements that Jesus says, you know, and, and, and the, and then the answer is you've given God enough when you've given him everything. And that's it. That's the answer. Yeah. Because God doesn't want some of you. He doesn't want most of you. He wants all of you. Right. And you know what? There are just things in our lives that we refuse to give God. And, and we don't mean to be that way. We just, we try hard, uh, a lot of us, but we just, we just, we just hang on to certain areas of our lives. Like for instance, we, I, I know a guy, um, he is just a wonderful uh, acting Christian um, he's got a ton of money. He's very successful. Uh, got a great business and, uh, attends our church every week. But when it comes to the area of like giving financially, uh, it's just, it's just not there. And so, and, and by the way, that does not mean that person isn't generous. Mm, sure. Right. It doesn't mean that this person is not a very good person. In fact, uh, he, this person may donate to save the penguins at the zoo Right. Or, or, or do all sorts of things. Right. right? But the kingdom of God's not the most important thing in his life. Well, not when it comes to, when, not when it comes right, to right. with his resources, fi- with resources. Well, Jesus said where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Right. 
Right. So yeah, I, yeah. Th- that's a fair statement just to say then if, right. if I'm not putting God's kingdom first with my resources, then that's just not where my heart is. Right. And, and, and so big and, fan fond of it all. <laughs> big glad, fan. Glad, glad I have glad, you know, glad I, I have fire insurance going to make right. it to heaven someday. Right. But it's just not my priority. And I'm yeah, interested yeah. in doing good. You yeah, know, yeah. like I I, do good. I'll do yeah, good yeah. as 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 uh, as I see fit, right? Yeah, right. So like when I see an opportunity and I move by it, yeah, I'll give to it. Sure. Yeah. I'll be a part of it. I'll serve. Yeah. Right. And so all these things are great things. Uh, but when it comes to uh, giving financially, it's just not there. And and I often wonder. I'm thinking <laughs> to myself like this is a classic example of, uh, and it's and it's not that way for everybody. For some people, they have no problem at all giving financially. Right. Uh, but then there's another area of their life and they're like, I'm just going to do what I want with this relationship sexually, mm-hmm. or I'm going to do what I want when it comes to how I run my business. And it's pick and choose. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, you yeah. sort of customize the Bible. Yeah, yeah. It's a Bible buffet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, know, you walk through a buffet and you're well, like, it's, it's Jesus a la carte. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> give me more meatballs, but I don't want the green beans. Yeah, right? right. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's, 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 it's the, it's the Bible buffet. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, I, I like, I like certain verses. I don't like certain verses. And here, and here, you know, here we have a, uh, you know, I mean, it, it's it's a Pharisee for goodness sake, or maybe a Sadducee. Right, right. And and by mm-hmm. the way, you know, the Sadducees, you know, they were notoriously known for being miserable. Yeah, yeah. Right. Do you know why? Because they didn't believe in the resurrection. No, no, no. They were sad. You see. Yeah, I know. That's why though. It's because they didn't believe in the resurrection. <laughs> oh come on, man. That's why they were sad. You, you see. You can't. You can't just. I was setting you up. I thought that was a joke. My joke. It is a joke. I know. But the joke is, do you know why they were sad? Right. Because they didn't believe in the resurrection. Okay, so you've heard the joke a different way. And that's why you, they were sad, you see. Okay, see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you, so you just you just couldn't hear the joke another way? No. Okay. I, right. I was I thought I was setting you up. Okay, all right. Why, well. I thought it was like a layup. It was just an alley-oop. Like an alley-oop. You just hit your head on the rim. Well, by the way, by the way, <laughs> I would venture to say that joke's so old that the majority of our listeners had never heard it. I, I would say it's so old the Sadducees were telling it. So that's... <laughs> The Pharisees were probably telling <laughs> they were joke. sad. You <laughs> yeah. see, yeah. so so um, th- this this passage reminds me of Jesus. Remember when Jesus tells the story of the rich man or the king, and he wants to have a party, and he sends his servants out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he go go find people and bring yeah. them to the thing. And the one guy goes, "Oh, I, I bought some a new pair of oxen. I got to try them out." Another guy says, "I bought a field. I got to check that out." Jesus is kind of saying none of none of these excuses are legit. The one that I think is somewhat legit is a guy said, I've married a wife and I cannot come. Right. Right. There you go. <laughs> she won't let me come. Right. <laughs> but the but the rest of them are are which is so funny. But Jesus kind of there's this theme in Jesus' life where people he he's challenging us saying, Hey, people have so many different reasons. Mm-hmm. And so then what does the king do? The king gets angry, says, Fine, forget those people, go out into the highways and hedges. Mm-hmm. Just Random strangers, anybody who will yeah, can come. Just, just fill this place. Right, whosoever will may come and, and fill that my house will be full. And, you know, that's, that's good news for us mm-hmm. because there are a lot of people who are distracted by all kinds of superficial things, things that seem important until you begin to think about eternity. But then that makes room for everybody who goes, you know what, I'll just lean in. There's a certain amount of character involved. He goes, anyone who puts his hand to the plow and then looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. You have to have a sense of just get it done, finish, finish what you started. Mm-hmm. Don't get distracted, right? And uh, uh, laser focus on what's most important in your life, and don't don't get started and quit. Don't uh, don't say, "Oh, Jesus, I'm going to follow you every day the rest of my life." Oh, you don't have a bed to sleep in? Never mind, right? Kind of thing. He's like, if you put your hand to the plow, you got to finish finish plowing. What he's talking about there is it's incredibly difficult. If, if you're doing a furrow, you're doing a row with a plow, you want them to be as, as straight as you can make these, these, these rows. And uh, if you start and then stop, it's hard to get back to that exact same spot at that exact same depth and to keep going straight. It's going to wind up veering off. It's going, to be, it's going to be a mess. And so it's really hard to get back to where you were or what you intended to do after you've stopped. And so the best thing for you to do is to just keep your hand on the plow and keep going, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, man alive, it gets hot. The sun starts beating down. It might be raining out. It's difficult. Maybe the, uh, you know, there's all kinds of struggles. And Jesus is just challenging us that, hey, there is a certain amount of character. Not to get to heaven. There's, it's not a character thing to get to heaven. There's a character thing with regard to uh, how you're going to live your life 
uh, and, and what kind of effectiveness you're going to have for the kingdom. Yeah. Well, that's, it's a pretty amazing uh, passage and it's so short and yeah. yet Jesus is really taking away people's excuses. And um, I, I think that, I think it's a great application for our listeners because as I mentioned before, you know, you may be like the gentleman that I sort of referenced, but it could be really literally anything. And so the question is what part of our lives do we most commonly hold back yeah. from God? Yeah. You know, what, you know, what's... And, and, and let our listeners pause for a second. Yep. Yeah, it's that thing. Right. Because <laughs> you know. Right. You already know. You already know what it is you've been holding back from right. God. <laughs> right. Yeah, and I think, I think it's a fair, I think it's a fair yeah. statement to say that, you know, whenever we come across the scriptures and whenever we, you know, whether we, whether we choose to read this or whether we choose to listen to a podcast, right, yeah, yeah. or whether the scripture just assaults us. You know, because sure. because somebody put it on a poster somewhere, right? right? right. Mm-hmm. You know, but every time we are confronted with God's word and it, and it jumps out at us, you know, I, that I believe that it's there for a reason. It, it's not unlike. Um, uh, so if you live in Michigan and you live in the Detroit area, like where we live, and mm-hmm. a lot of our listeners do, yeah, right? Sure. Uh, so for the for for the many 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 who don't, um, I, I got to tell you, when you get on I seventy five and you go north. Uh, pretty famously, there's this sign of Jesus from the 1970s, yeah, uh-huh, right? Yeah, yeah. And 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 it's it's that famous, you know, it doesn't look probably anything like how right, Jesus right. looked, right? But it's that famous painting from the 70s where he's sort of looking up in the sky, real gently, you know. Mm-hmm. And 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 then it says, "Are you on the right road?" Right, right. Yeah. And 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 it's and it's sort of convicting because oh, yeah. because you, you 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 read it and then you can't help but to think about, am I on the right road? I, I've had multiple people tell me, me that, too. that that was the thing that made them yes. think I need to get right with God. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's so funny because in, yeah. in one sense, it is pretty Christianese cheesy, right? Sure. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's, it's just about as cheesy as you could possibly get. Yeah. Are you on the right road? It's just yeah. so che- cause you're driving on a road, right? Yeah. And, and it's, so it's sort of cheesy. I was talking to a trucker and he said, literally there, there's a rest stop just yeah. past there, maybe another yeah. five miles. Yeah. yeah and yeah. he pulled over and got on his knees and trusted Christ. Yeah. Well, right there. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've heard, those, I've that. I've heard yeah, that story too. Yeah, yeah. I've heard a, a woman's yeah. entire testimony yeah. of, of like, I came to Christ like 10 years ago yeah. when I was driving up I 75 yeah. North, you know, Got God will use so he uh, Paul says that God delights in in using the uh, foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Yeah, right. And so so he said, I knew I knew the pastor who built that. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he's, so he's in heaven now, but yeah. Okay, so all of that to say, um, you know, whenever we're confronted with God's word, and whenever it jumps out, and whether whenever we feel like the Holy Spirit is nudging us or encouraging us or convicting us. I believe that it's our response to, uh, res- or it's our, you know, it's our duty to respond because, again, remember, uh, the goal of the Christian life is not about knowledge; it's about application, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that's a great place to end, yeah. and uh, it's a good thought for today. So we'll see you next time on the Bible Guys.